Hello, Jim Stroud here, and welcome to Job Hunting and the Absence of Online Privacy Version 2.0. This is where I update the original version of this presentation from, I think it was two years ago. So now it has uh, more updated information for your viewing pleasure. Okay, this uh, presentation is being brought to you in part by... And the number one job hunting book in the world, Job Search Strategies for Unemployed, Underemployed, and Unhappily Employed People, available on Amazon.com. Get your copy today. Okay, okay, quick question, quick question, and yes, that is me, a face only a mother could love. <laughs> yeah, okay, my quick question is this, is there such a thing as online privacy? And yes, that is a trick question, take your time. Is there such a, such a thing as online privacy? Think a moment, think a moment. Okay. If you answered no, there's no such thing as online privacy. Are you kidding? Then you would be correct. Companies do track your data. Hackers invade computer systems all the time. Uh, word of mouth travels far, fast, and wide. So, hey, it's a fact of life. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's no such thing as online privacy. But if you were among those few people, and I think there were a few who said yes, then you would also be correct because you can safeguard your online reputation, the stuff that's online spoken about you, uh, by being selective of what you post online and then, of course, monitoring, uh, monitoring uh, what's being said about you. So it's, it's not all doom and gloom out there. Now, the better question to ask is what will people see when they look you up? Most importantly, what will a recruiter see? Ah, 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 that's the question. That's the question. Now, let me tell you something that uh, you might suspect, but might not really know. So let me just break it down to you. Everybody uh, Googles everybody else. You know, recruiters, recruiters uh, look you up online to uh, find out more about you specifically, to look up your background, and to decide if they want to hire you versus the, the other guy or, or woman who is uh, being considered. Now, they won't tell you that they're doing this, but trust me, they are doing it. Now, why wouldn't they tell you this? Um, basically because of potential lawsuits. Uh, it's, it's, for example, let's say that I, as a recruiter, I do a search on Facebook and then I tell you, you know what, you were a great candidate, but I didn't hire you because of some things I found out about you on Facebook. Well, you could come back at me and say, well, because you found my information on Facebook, um, then you saw my sex or you saw my sexual preference, you saw my religion, uh, you saw my, I don't know, political affiliation, and so you're discriminating against me, so I'm going to sue. Now, one person saying something like that, that's like, eh, whatever, the company will brush that off. But if everybody starts... Uh, trying to raise up a lawsuit over this at the same time, uh, that's a headache that nobody wants to deal with. So the easiest way to do this is to say, uh, is to send you a generic little message that all companies send out to you that say, hey, thanks, but no thanks, we went somewhere else. That's the safe answer. But the real answer could very well have been that they saw something about you online uh, on Facebook, and that's the real reason why you didn't get the job. Just, just sort of FYI. Now, that being said, uh, there are still people online, actually quite a few people online, who do kind of wacky things, wacky things. For some reason, they think um, if they tweet something or post something on Facebook, only their friends will see it. Uh, that being the case, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Uh, would people who are seeking employment or desiring to stay employed Say or do the following things online for the whole world to see. All right, let me test you a little bit. Okay, this is the case of the frustrated flight attendant. There was uh, one particular uh, flight attendant who was not having a really good day, uh, dealing with passengers and, and attitudes and so forth. So she got really, really frustrated. And so what she decided to do was, once everyone was finally sitting down and the plane was about to take off, she gets out her, uh, her, her uh, iPhone, uh, gives everyone the finger, 
Uh, again, this is from the back of the plane, so none of the passengers see it. Uh, but she gives everyone a, a finger, uh, uh, which says, you're number one in my heart. <laughs> and took a picture of it and then tweeted it out saying, this is what this airline thinks about its passengers. Uh, so uh, people saw that and started retweeting it. It went viral and just became a big mess. Now, my telling you this, is this a true story or something I just made up? Go ahead. Take three seconds. Is it true or false? Uh-huh. Well, the answer is it is true. <laughs> it is true. Someone was very frustrated, uh, tweeted out a, uh, a photo of their finger. <laughs> yeah, that's just wow. They did that, and it went viral, and that particular person um, was fired. So there you go. For some reason, they thought only their friends uh, would know about that or would have seen that tweet, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, here's another test. Uh, the case of misguided loyalties, as I say. Now, there's a certain anchor, anchor person, uh, or single, uh, a certain newspaper person, reporter, uh, not the anchor man here, but someone like him, and they, and they were reporting on the death of a terrorist, someone who is widely known, who was widely known as someone who killed several Americans in an embassy bombing, among other delightful things. And so this uh, reporter on a major, major news network said in so many words, uh, he's not really a bad guy. He's simply misunderstood. And I respect him highly and I'll miss him. Now, what's a newspaper reporter or anchor person of a major news organization say something like that? I mean, it is a national news organization and reporters presumably have that much sense not to tweet something out there like that. So... Is that true or am I making it up? Take a couple of seconds, think about it, think about it, think about it. Well, the answer is, drum roll please, true. This particular uh, newspaper person, uh, Octavia Nazir, uh, said this type of tweet about someone who killed Americans and uh, they were not uh, employed for CNN much longer after that. Oh, so there you go. Okay, you guys are pretty good at guessing. Let me, let me try it one more time. Okay, this is the case of monotonous migraine. Now, someone calls into the office and go, hey, boss, uh, ooh, my head is hurting. I got a migraine. I just don't think I can make it in today. And the boss says, you know what? It's okay. I understand. I know you have migraine issues. Just, just go ahead and stay home. Go ahead and stay home. Take care of yourself, and we'll see you back at the office tomorrow. You know, and so the person says, thanks, boss. And then after hanging up the phone, gets on Facebook and starts uh, sharing things and saying uh, all kinds of manner of things about the job and just sharing stuff in general. Um, and then they realize, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> my boss is following me on Facebook uh, along with some of my coworkers. So they get in some hot water and uh, summarily fired. Now, is that something I made up? Or is that uh, true? What do you think? Let's take three seconds. I'll take one second. I, you, are, you already know the answer. I can see it in your eyes, in, in, in my imagination anyway. <laughs> that person was fired for calling in sick, then using Facebook. As Homer would say, don't, ah, don't know what possesses people to uh, do that. But those are three examples of people who, are, uh, who didn't think it through when they were tweeting something or posting something on Facebook and not considering the long-term ramifications of some of the things they've, they've done. So, uh, oh yeah, let me share this with you. Every year there is a company called Jobvite that does a social recruiting survey. And what that means is they reach out to companies and they say, hey, when it comes to LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, blogs, and all these other things that are out here, uh, are you really using them? Are you uh, using them to make your decisions? Are you finding people out there? And uh, one thing that was asked in the last survey was, uh, do you review a candidate's social profile before making a hiring decision? 93% said yes. So when you think about that, the first inclination might be, okay, well, I won't post anything uh, bad online, but you know what? I won't post anything online. Matter of fact, I won't be online at all, you know? Uh, well, you might want to reconsider that because 
not only are recruiters looking for things that will disqualify you for a job, they also look for things that will uh, make you, uh, will make them consider you for the job. So they need to see good stuff there as well. Now, when recruiters are looking at these different social profiles out there, these are the, these are the things they're looking for. Your professional experience, which is number one. How long you've been doing whatever you're doing, number two. And then you notice where the black arrow is pointing to industry-related posts. They're looking for um, posts that you have made online about your industry that show that you are someone who understands the industry, who is an expert in the industry, who has something to say about the industry. So uh, they're looking for good stuff too. So when you have in your mind that I'm not going to be online at all, well, you, that really would work against you because recruiters not only look for good stuff, I mean, I don't only look for bad stuff, but they also look for good stuff as well. Make sense? I imagine you shaking your head. So, okay, cool. Now, here is a, another study that Microsoft did a few years back, which sort of validates uh, what I just said on the last slide. Uh, about 70% of the people Microsoft had surveyed of HR professionals said they have rejected candidates based on online reputation information. When I say online reputation, that means things they found out about people uh, through social media and how they're being uh, talked about uh, online or how they're representing themselves online. So 70% of HR, HR professionals said, nope, I saw something negative, don't want them. But on the flip side, 86%, 86% of HR professionals saw something good online. They said, hey, wow, this is really great. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and hire this person because I looked online and I saw some good stuff being said about them or I saw them sharing their expertise about their particular industry, which impressed me. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and hire them. Yeah? Okay. So on one hand, it's kind of funny, the things people do online that sort of limits their uh, career growth. But on the other hand, it's, it's, really, it's really quite serious. It's really quite serious when you think about it. Okay. Oh, this is really interesting too. Now this, um, there is a company called Career Crossroads uh, that's run by a, a pal of mine, uh, Jerry Crispin and uh, Mark Miller, who's his partner. And every year, what they do is they do what's called a source of hire report. And what they do is they reach out to companies all over the world and say, hey, when it comes to uh, where you're getting your hires, uh, whether it's from job boards, career site, college fairs, uh, people walking the door, what have you, um, where are you getting your most hires? Now, as you look here on the screen, you see that the number one way that companies are getting their hires are employee referrals which tells you, uh, hey, you know, you really need to do a good job networking because companies are finding people a lot that way. That's number one way they're finding people. Number two is career site. Uh, the career site is the more or less the career section on a company page. So when you go to a company website where it says about us or it says careers, click that link and you're seeing the different jobs. So people are going to the company website, checking out the company, and then looking at the jobs that are posted on the company website. Number three is the job boards. You know, your monsters, your career builders, your dice, companies like that. Number four is a term that might not be familiar to you. It's called direct sourcing. What is that? That is finding information about people you want to hire uh, online uh, for free. <laughs> Let me point that out. And then um, uh, reaching out and hiring them. Now, I'm going to go a lot into that in just a second. But let me sort of backtrack a little bit here. And let's look at these, these numbers a little bit more. Now, I, I point to referrals being the number one way that companies are finding talent to recruit. But look at the stats. In 2012, referrals was at 24.5, but in 2013, it took a dip to 19.2. Career site, that also took a dive from 23.4 to 19.1. Job boards from 18 to 15. But, oh, look at direct sourcing. It was at 6.8% in 2012. And now is at 12 point, well, 2013 is at 12.1%. So why is that? Why are companies spending so much time direct sourcing, which is searching the internet for people for different jobs uh, and hiring them versus uh, spending more time on job boards or, or career sites and, and other things? Well, that is it's a couple of reasons. One, if I have a job that I need to fill and I post it on Monster, you know, or, or dice or career builder or whatever, I'm going to get, you know, 200 responses like before the day is out. And out of those 200 responses, maybe, maybe 12 might be 
uh, qualified. Because typically what people will do is they'll look at the job description and they'll look at the, excuse me, the job description. They'll look at the job title and then just send the resume and hope it sticks, you know. So they're not really uh, a match. Uh, uh, they don't really read the job description. They just look at the job title. Um, so if I instead can just do a search and find somebody for a role, then I don't have to worry about going through a whole bunch of resumes. I don't have to worry about people calling me, asking me the status of, the res of their resume. I don't have to deal with so many emails coming to me saying, hey, did you get my resume? Instead, I can just go out, find a person I want, and just deal with those few people. Saves me headache as a recruiter. Just throwing it out there. Number two, which I think is the most underlying reason, is that direct sourcing is free. Something you might not think about as a job seeker is that Monster, Career Builder, Dice, and all the others, uh, well, most of the others, a company has to pay for that. You post your resume, you see a job, from the job seeker perspective, you see a job, you post your resume, it's all free and you're waiting. From a company perspective, uh, they have to pay a uh, subscription fee to access the resumes that are inside of Monster or, or all the others. So depending on the budget of the department uh, that the recruiter is working in, if they're working for a big corporation or if they're working for a small mom and pop shop, they may have access to maybe one or two, but not all three. You see what I mean? So um, if they can go on Google, which they can, and do a search and come across a resume that way, or find mention of someone who is um, uh, who is an expert in what they're doing, and they can just approach that particular person, then they found that person for free. It was free for them. Everybody loves free. So if I can do uh, a lot of things online and find people for free, I'm saving money, and I just love it. So I'm going to spend more time uh, doing all I can to find people for jobs for free. question is, though, the question is, when you consider that is if a recruiter does a search for uh, a resume like yours, uh, will they find it for free? If your resume is only on Monster or Career Builder or Dice or different job boards like that, then the answer is no. Every recruiter will not see your resume. Only those recruiters who have paid to access that service. But I'm rambling. I'm rambling. More on that. More on that in a minute. So all that to say, don't be afraid of the Internet. Just be responsible and put it to work for you, not against you. So um, that brings me to this unwritten rule, the number one unwritten rule of recruiting. And I have not written it here because it's unwritten. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, that's right. Just seeing if you're paying attention. The number one, <laughs> I'm just tickling myself. The number one unwritten rule of recruiting is do not lose your job. And I, and I say that, do not lose your job. I'm speaking about the recruiter who is trying to find other people. Think about this from a recruiter's perspective. If, a hire, if somebody hires me to find people and recruit them for a particular job, and I'm sending my client a bunch of resumes from people who are not qualified, then the, the client's going to say, you keep sending me people that are not quali qualified for this role. You're wasting my time. I hired you to save me time because I don't have time to go through these resumes. You must not be a good recruiter, so I'm going to fire you and find somebody else who can recruit for this role. Now, that being the case, the recruiter is going to, when he's evaluating, where he or she is evaluating different people for a role, they're thinking in the back of their minds, one, is this person qualified? You know, that's, that's really the secondary reason uh, they're looking. The first reason is, will this person make me look good? If I present this person's resume to my hiring manager, do their credentials say, wow, this person is really great? I didn't know this person was even out there. You must be a good recruiter because you found me some really great candidates. That's the reaction every recruiter wants. That being the case, it is uh, it behooves you as a job seeker to convince the recruiter that you will not embarrass them, that you are qualified, that you can do the job, that you present well in front of the hiring manager, and that you will reflect well upon them, the recruiter. So that being the case, they should confidently be able to share your resume with the hiring manager or the client, whatever the case may be. So keep that in mind. And I say that because um, on several occasions, what happens is people will say, I know I'm qualified for the job, and they very well may be, but because they were not able to convince the recruiter that they would represent the recruiter well, then that recruiter is not going to champion them further, which leads the job seeker to be very frustrated when they see other people getting the job, and they say, well, that recruiter's not doing their job. They're not doing, they're, they're not doing a good job because they should have at least put me in front of them. 
Well, that may be the case. But it also could be the case that you did not sell yourself well enough to a recruiter to let them know that you would not embarrass them, to let them know that you uh, are a great candidate so that by presenting you to their client or hiring manager, then that makes them look like the greatest recruiter ever because they found somebody like you. Okay? Um, enough of that rant. I felt like I had to go on a rant. I had to vent. Sometimes I vent. So that was what that's all about. Okay. Um, all that being said, reputation matters. Because even before a recruiter, because uh, actually when a recruiter is considering uh, presenting you to a hiring manager or his client or what have you, uh, they, they want to make sure that you're not going to embarrass them. And one way they're going to do that is they're going to check out your reputation. They're going to see what other people have said about you. They're going to see how you're representing yourself. And they're going to say, okay, this person has represented themselves so well and other people have vouched for them so well, so much, that I feel confident in sharing their work history with my client. So... Uh, in order to do that, to give that recruiter that warm and fuzzy feeling about you so they will champion your resume to their client or hiring manager, you want to make sure that you have a great online reputation, which, it, which means that when someone does the poor man's background check on you on Google, um, uh, they, find, they find things that say, wow, this is a good person. I will feel confident sharing this person's resume with my client because at least from what I see here, uh, I don't think they would embarrass me. So all of that um, is around reputation, and I'm going to show you, share with you a few tips and tricks on how to build and manage your reputation so that a recruiter will have that warm and fuzzy feeling and feel confident about passing your information on. I feel like I'm rambling. Am I rambling? You're nodding your head yes. At least I'm imagining you're nodding your head yes. Okay, I'll go on. I'll go on. It's okay. I'll go on. <clears throat> so the number, one, the number one thing you want to do in regards to managing your reputation is to first evaluate where you are. Um, one thing you want to do is to Google poor man's background check. Just do a search to see what you find out about yourself online. Put in your name, put in your name in additional keywords related to your industry to see what comes up. And if you see something that you might not like, um, you can petition Google to remove that content. Ah, did you know you could do that? On the bottom left-hand side of the screen, there's a link. You can always pause the video here and jot down that address, and it will bring you to this page, which is a page on Google, which, which gives you more tips about how to manage your online reputation. In a nutshell, if there's information about you on Google that is uh, untrue or you, don't, or you just don't like or you have different reasons why you want it to come down, you can petition Google to remove it from its database. Now, that won't take the information down altogether, but what it will do is it will point you, it will uh, remove a link to the information uh, inside of Google. So when someone does a search, they won't see that link to that information, although the information is still out there. Am I, am I making sense there? Hopefully I am. So, uh, you could, so write down the address that's there on the bottom left-hand side of the screen or just do a search on Google Reputation Management and it'll still this page will pop up as well. So uh, another thing, too, that is suggested is that you fill out a Google profile. And there's information about filling a Google profile out here as well. It's sort of like a LinkedIn profile. Um, it's sort of the same thing. You put in your name and where you work and interests and hobbies, whatever. And basically all you're doing is you're making, you're making a trail uh, for recruiters to find information about you. So you can, you can post your professional information so that when they do a search, your Google profile could appear among the search results as well, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, I've done a search of my own name here inside of Bing. And a couple of things I want you to notice. Uh, the very first thing that Bing does is it shows uh, different social, uh, social network results and social media results. Okay, like for example, I, do, I search in my name and if you notice, among the, the very first result is my blog. So you can check out my blog if you want to, blog.jimstroud.com. But I have as a header on my blog, I have an about section, I have a career highlight section, I have a my resume section. Yes, yes I do. Now I am currently very, very happy, ecstatically happy at my job. But throughout my career, I've been laid off three times, you know, so that teaches me that stuff happens, you know, companies get acquired and they lay people off, recessions, all kinds of things. So you never really know, uh, you, you know. So by having my resume up on my blog, it's sort of like an insurance policy, you know. 
if someone were to contact me now, I was like, no, I'm happy. I'm good where I am. But you never know what will happen in the future. So I made it easier for people to sort of check me out that way. So that's why I have that. Um, also notice on the right hand side of the screen where that black arrow is pointing down to on the right hand side is pointing to my LinkedIn account. Ha 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 ha. Yes. That's not the reason why it's so important to have a LinkedIn account. So when a recruiter or anyone is doing the poor man's background check, they've gone through Google, they go to Bing as well. Uh, one of the first things they'll notice is a link to your LinkedIn account, which is great because if they are going to my LinkedIn account, then they're going to take special notice of my professional information that I've placed on LinkedIn. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you're nodding your head. Of course, you're nodding your head because it makes sense. At least I hope so. All right. Uh, this is another search, excuse me, on uh, on Yahoo. Notice the same thing has appeared. Uh, my blog's at the top of the page. So maybe that should suggest to you that you should create a blog. Um, I'm using WordPress. You may want to go to WordPress. W-O-R-D-P-R-E-S-S, -S, wordpress.com, create you a WordPress account. And even if you're not active on it, uh, just post you know uh, your resume there so that when someone does a search on your name, then your WordPress blog could be the first result where they'll see your professional information and not other information that you might not want them to see. Now, if you were to scroll down this page, uh, not only would you see um, pictures of me, <laughs> uh, as you see there, and if you scroll down a little further, you'll see links to my Twitter account and to my YouTube account and Facebook and all this other stuff as well. So all that to say, even if I'm not active, even if I, which I am, but if I were not active on YouTube or Instagram or Pinterest or Twitter, or all these other kind of social media sites, it still would be in my interest to set up accounts there and put in my professional information because I know recruiters will be doing their background checks, their poor man background checks on Google and so on. Um, and so it would be in my best interest to have information about me out there that shows my professionalism, or talks about my, my professional background. And by posting information about my professional background on, on these different social media sites, when they're doing a search for me, uh, the right information, the information that I want to be found will appear high in the search results. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, it's different when I can't look at you and see you in person shaking your head, but I'm imagining that you're shaking your head. So, uh, hopefully, you are. All right, well, there you go. And yes, I'm talking to you. Yes, you listening to me talk, I'm talking to you. Yes, okay, here we go. Oh, uh, something else too. Now, I mentioned how on uh, with Google, you can go to that page and you can delete. Um, information about yourself on Google by petitioning Google to remove it. Uh, you can also petition uh, Bing and Yahoo to also remove that information. At the bottom uh, part of the screen, you'll see links to support.microsoft.com, which will get your information, get your negative information out of Bing, and help.yahoo.com, where you can petition to get certain information out of Yahoo. So uh, you want to delete bad information that you found. Uh, but by the way, um, although you can do that, it's a process and it may take forever for that to happen or at least feel like forever. The surest way and the quickest way to get stuff removed is to approach the webmaster, the person who's in charge of that website and just say, hey, uh, dude, or do that. <laughs> I said do that. Or you say do that. Um, I'm trying to get a job. Would you mind removing that picture of me dancing topless in the Cayman Islands? I, I really appreciate that, you know? And if they're cool, hopefully they are, they'll go ahead and remove it. Uh, but if not, and if taking information outside of Google, Yahoo, and Bing is taking forever, one thing you might want to consider is uh, changing your name and how you represent yourself on your resume. So instead of saying your name is John Smith, it could be John C. Smith. So that when you uh, talk to a recruiter and you, and you are in the interview process, you can say, hey, when should you happen to do your, your uh, background check on me and look me up, please keep in mind that I am John C. Doe. John C. Smith, rather, and not John Smith. So when you see someone talking crazy or doing crazy things as John Smith, that's not me. I'm John C. Smith. So please keep that in mind uh, when you're doing your, your background there. Okay? And that's good. It's also good to know, to do a search, um, not only to find out what's said about you, but what's being said about other people who have your name uh, for this very reason. So when it comes up, you can say... Uh, there's certain people online who share my name, but they're not me. They're doing crazy things. That's not me. I just want you to know, Mr. Recruiter, 
while you're doing your evaluation. So that type of thing. It works in your best interest. Okay. Oh, this is a cool site. Uh, you get to it by going to Noem, K-N-O-W-E-M.com, Noem.com. All right, so what you would do is um, where it says enter name here, you would put in your username. Like in my case, I'll put in Jim Stroud because like many people, I use the same username for various accounts. So if I put in here Jim Stroud and then put check it, it will check 550 social networks that are out there. Like, yeah, it's that many out there. So 550 social, popular social networks. And so it'll say Jim Stroud has, a, has an account on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on Bebo, Foursquare, all these others out there, right? So uh, do a search on, on your name or, your, or, the, or the username that you tend to use. And you can say, oh, wow, I, I forgot that I joined SexySingles.com. Let me go ahead and uh, remove my account from there because I don't want people to see... Uh, I don't want recruiters doing a background check and seeing my sexy single page and getting the wrong impression about who I am and what I do. So uh, thank you, Norm.com, for reminding me of some of the sites that I've joined in the past when I was in college or did, just didn't know any better and I totally forgot about. So uh, definitely do that because other people are doing it. Let me tell you that, okay? Um, okay, enough of that. Second thing you want to do uh, in regards to managing your online reputation, is to figure out who you want to be. Sounds simple, I know, uh, but I just want to, want to remind it, remind you with this picture. Now, take a moment, because this is another trick question. Can you tell me what this is on the screen? If you are a serial lover, that's a hint, uh, then you know full well. And if you like fruit, <laughs> if you like cereal and you like fruit, then you pretty much pretty much know uh, what this is. And if you have kids in the house, I'm pretty sure you know uh, what this is. And if you grew up like me eating uh, this with milk, then you know what that is. So my question is, do you know what this is? Yes. Okay. I hear you. Yes. I hear you saying Fruit Loops. Yes, Jim, it's Fruit Loops. I hear you. Okay. Yes, yeah, Fruit Loops. I got it. But is it? <laughs> Is it Fruit Loops or is it Fruit Rings? If you are the careful shopper like my wife, then you know how to find these little deals like this. Now, Fruit Rings is sort of like the generic version of Fruit Loops. Um, in my opinion, they sort of taste the same. Uh, there are some food connoisseurs who said, oh, no, there is a difference between Fruit Rings and Fruit Loops. Uh, <laughs> but to me, they're, they're both the kind of the same. So, uh, but one thing that I find really interesting about this is that Fruit Loops cost, um, oh gosh, last time I was in the store, it's been a while, uh, grocery shopping, because usually I don't do it, but I think Fruit Loops go for like around $4, $4 and some change or something, unless they're on sale. And Fruit Rings, you can get that for like a buck, maybe a buck and a half, no more than $2, you know, the generic version. So when I look at that, I'm in the store and I'm looking like, okay, Fruit Loops cost like uh, almost five bucks uh, for a box, and Fruit Rings, which which is you know tastes the same to me, is is basically like two bucks. You know, so what's the what's the difference between the two? And and I'm asking you, yeah, I'm I'm talking to you directly. What is the difference between Fruit Loops and Fruit Rings? Well, how come Fruit Loops is so much more, and and Fruit Rings is like you know a, a buck and fifty cents or something like that, or two dollars? You know, um, what's the difference? I mean, they they look the same, they taste the same, if you ask me. So I don't get it. So what do you think? I'm listening. No, no, I'm actually listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Good guess. Good guess. Um, all right. Try, try, try something else. I'm, I'm asking somebody else behind you now. Um, they're essentially the same thing. So why is more, more, more expensive? I'm looking. I'm putting my glasses on and looking deep, looking deeply at you. Yes, I'm looking directly at you. What's the difference? Okay, okay, okay. okay. The difference is branding. Yes, I know you said it, but, you know, I had to build up the suspense. Okay. So the, di <laughs> the difference is branding. So that being the case, I got to ask you, what makes you more valuable than the next guy? When it comes to resumes and qualifications, let me ask you this. Are you the Fruit Loops? Or are you the fruit rings? 
are you the type of candidate where you are so qualified and your expertise is so evident that you warrant a higher salary, greater benefits? Or are you the fruit rings candidate, someone who meets uh, the qualifications, but you're not really wowing me? You're not really selling me on how great you are. So I'm going to offer you at best the going rate. I'm not going to try to wow you with more benefits or give you a better offer because I think you, while qualified, you're more on the fruit ring side. You got to sort of ask yourself that, really. Check this out, too. This is um, Indeed. You got you know Indeed, right? Yeah? Okay. Indeed, uh, in case you didn't, I was going to say you go to Indeed.com, right? Well, Indeed has different tools, right? And so one of the tools they have is a salary comparison. Now, check this out. I did a search here for an administrative assistant in Atlanta because that's, that's where I'm at. And uh, I also did another search for executive assistant in Atlanta. Now, from my understanding, an admin assistant is essentially, essentially the same as an executive assistant, right? Yet an executive assistant can command a higher salary than someone who's an administrative assistant, although essentially they're doing the same thing. One is a Fruit Loop <laughs> and one is fruit rings because of how they are representing themselves online and because of their backgrounds and other things. But just trying to make you go, hmm, let's think about that. So I say that because when talking to candidates and it gets down to the salary negotiation part of it, everyone wants to, everyone starts singing this song. Give it to me, I'm worth it. Give it to me, I'm worth it. Da, da, da. Give it to me, I'm worth it. All right, my daughter sings that song a lot. Uh, maybe, <laughs> I'm just tickling myself. Okay, maybe you know that song too. Maybe you had it booming in your car. I, I don't know, maybe you saw the video. But basically, uh, the song basically says, I'm so wonderful, I'm beautiful, and I, and I deserve the best of the best. And so when candidates come in and it's time for to negotiate the salary, in their own way, they start singing that song, Give It To Me, I'm Worth It. And so I have to, as a recruiter, look at them and say, well, are you really worth it? Are you giving me something or sharing something in your work history and your background that proves to me that you're worth it? Because if I'm going to argue more money for you, I need something to work with. Because it's not my money, it's the company's money. And I'm not the CFO or the accountant, so I got to go back to them and say, hey, this person needs more money. They're worth it because of A, B, and C. I need something to work with. And other, I need something more than just somebody telling me, oh, I'm good and I deserve it. And they start, you know, shaking their heads or whatever. I mean, it's not giving me all this, I don't know, prideful thinking. I mean, that doesn't really help me at all. And it's not going to help me. It's not going to help you either, right? So when it comes to give it to me, I'm worth it. Let me give you uh, a couple of tips, okay? Uh, one tip is to go to this site, which is helpareporterout.com. Helpareporterout.com. Now, this is what um, helpareporterout.com is what it does. Now, if um, a reporter, reporters write all kinds of stories all the time, all kinds of topics, right? And so um, after they've written their stories, they need, um, uh, uh, what am I looking for? They need quotes. That's what I'm looking for, the word quotes. Thank you. They need quotes from people to, uh, to validate their story. So when you're reading a news article, you'll see the article say, blah, 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 blah. And then somewhere in there, it'll say, uh, according to such and such, the CEO of this company, they said, blah, 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 right? So they need uh, people to, uh, they need quotes from people to validate their story. So what Help a Reporter Out does is reporters will say, hey, I'm working on a story about the dentistry, the dental industry. Well, I'm writing a story about uh, uh, being a software developer or whatever. And so I need an expert to give me a quote for my story, okay? If you subscribe to this site, which you can for free, you will get information on reporters that are looking for people to give them quotes. You see in this daily listing, because they send out, I think, two emails a day. Um, you, you see the email, and you say, oh, somebody's doing a story on my industry. I can offer an opinion on that. Let me contact that reporter and say, hey, I was in an industry for 10 years or whatever, and I can talk about that particular topic. The reporter says, cool, what do you think about this? You say something really brilliant. Reporter's impressed, puts it in the paper, and then when a recruiter is doing a background check on you, they'll see that not only are you qualified for the role, but you're cited in the media. 
You were quoted in this newspaper. You were quoted in this magazine. You must be really smart because you're in the paper. So therefore, you are uh, worth more money because you are uh, an industry expert. I take it for somebody who has been featured in news articles uh, from Time, not Time, uh, Wall Street Journal, Atlanta Journal Constitution, uh, Global Mail, Black Enterprise, Entrepreneur Magazine, and so on. Several times I've been quoted in the news. Does that mean that I'm really smart? Does that mean really mean does that really mean I'm such a big time expert? Or does it mean I know about help a reporter out? Well, it might be, and now you know too. So there you go. Wink, wink. All right. Now, uh, another thing you want to do is to uh, go over to Buzz Sumo. Now this isn't a freebie, but they do offer part of it for free. Now to get to it, you go to Buzz Sumo. Uh, dot com. And so what I suggest you, what BuzzSumo does is you put in a keyword and let's say you have, uh, your background is financial. So you do a search on stock prices, right? And so what BuzzSumo will do will show you the most popular, uh, blog posts or articles that are out there that have been shared across Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, and Google plus, right? So in this case, I did a search on stock prices and I see that this article from the Wall Street Journal, um, has been shared 2,600 times across Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on. So what I would do is I would go to that article, go down to the comment section, and I would say something really smart about stock prices that prove how smart I am in the industry. And somewhere in there, I would have a link to my LinkedIn account. So when a recruiter does a background check and looks up my name, they'll come across my... Um, uh, my comment that I said uh, on this popular article. And because this article is so popular and because it's been shared so much, Google is going to uh, give it uh, a little favor in the search engine results, right? Because the way Google search engine works is that, I don't want to get too nerdy here or too geeky, but the more people share an article or, or share some content or give it a like or comment on it or tweet or, or, or Google plus one, that kind of thing, the, Google is going to say, okay, because so many people are sharing and commenting on this on this article, it must be important. So I'm going to raise it up higher in the search results whenever somebody does a search for stock prices or whatever the article's about, right? So uh, that being the case, when a recruiter is doing a search for your name and that article is ranking high, your name will appear in the search results uh, more so. They'll read what you have to say and go, wow, this person is really smart. Not only do they have the skills that I want? Not only are they being quoted in the media, but I see them leaving profound and wonderful comments on articles out there um, uh, in, in the world. So uh, something else to make you look really good and smart for, a, uh, for recruiters to find, okay? Another thing too that you can do fairly easily enough is to share your expertise on podcasts. If you have um, iTunes, do you have, do you have yeah, I'm actually. Do you have an iPhone? Do you have a? Do you? You're not in your head. You have an iPhone. Okay. Whether you have an iPhone or not, then um, you can. If you have an iPhone, in this case, go to iTunes, do a search for podcasts, and you'll see that there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of podcasts out there. Find one that speaks to your niche, and then um, listen to a couple of them so you get sort of a the feel for what the podcast is about. Then reach out to the person who is the producer of that podcast or the host of that podcast and say, hey, I heard your podcast about X. I am also uh, have experience in the industry. Uh, would you like to have a guest on your show? I wouldn't mind being a guest on your show talking about whatever, right? And they'll say, sure, cool, whatever. You're up here on their podcast and hopefully you'll say something really smart, okay? Now, does the podcast have to be super popular with thousands of people are listening? It might be a podcast where only three people a week are listening. That's almost irrelevant. What is relevant is that you can put on your resume and you can mention to a recruiter in a, in a interview setting that not only are you qualified, but you've been quoted in the media because of help a reporter out. You are commenting on different articles on topics that recruiter probably would have found when, when they were doing a search on your name. And you can also mention that you were a guest on a podcast about your industry. Wow, you must be super important. You must be an expert because all the other people that I talk to, they're not guests on podcasts. They're not mentioned in the media, you know? 
and I don't see their, I don't see them commenting on popular articles. So, but I see you doing that, so you must be uh, more qualified than all these other people. At the very least, you give me something to argue when I go to the accounting section and say I need to get this person more money because look, uh, look at the influence they have because they are being featured in the paper and podcasts and all that kind of stuff. Right? Make sense? Okay. All that being said, this is some homework I'm giving you. Okay. Now I'm not going to check it. I'm not going to grade it. But the it's more of a pass or fail. The pass is getting a job. <laughs> so uh, you let me know uh, how that works out for you. Okay. So here is here's the, here's the homework assignment. I want you to figure out your personal brand. So by doing that, you should fill out this blank. Matter of fact, you can even pause the video here if you want to. It's up to you. And you can jot this down. I want you to tape this next to the bathroom or, or, or tape it next to the TV or wherever you go so you can see it every day, right? And so you're going to say, when recruiters look up your job title, whatever job, I forget, what, what kind of job do you do? I forget, never, never mind. Okay, look up, or when recruiters look up your job title, they will find you. And when they find you, they will regard you as an expert in skill one, skill two, skill three, whatever, whatever your thing is. And then identify me quick and easy to remember to uh, they will identify me by my quick and easy to remember mantra and whatever your elevator sales pitch is there, you know, because it, it, your elevator pitch could be, you know, I am, um, uh, I don't know, the world's greatest dentist, you know. And so uh, whenever somebody does a search on you, they're going to see. Uh, that you are the world's greatest dentist because you would have repeated that um, in in your articles when you're talking to reporters trying to help a reporter out. You would have mentioned it on the podcast. Uh, you would have mentioned something like along those lines when you're leaving comments on um, on popular articles, things like that. So it's all about your brand, how you want to be perceived, how you want people to see you, how you want to be found, how you want recruiters to find you. I feel like I'm rambling. Am I rambling? Because I feel like I I'm, I'm am I okay. Should I keep going? Yeah. All right. All right. I'm keep going. All right. Oh. This is something I want to keep I want to share with you too. I mentioned job vite, and this is another earlier in the in the presentation, and this is a um, another uh, uh, another point I want to bring up about their survey. Okay, one of the things they asked is that um, have you recruiters, Mr. Recruiter or Miss Recruiter, have you hired a candidate through social media? And so, which part, which kind of social media did you hire them from? Top four answers are on the screen. LinkedIn by a wide margin. No surprise. And if you do not have a LinkedIn profile, shame on you. You're doing yourself a disservice. Why do I say that? Because obviously from this, a lot of recruiters use LinkedIn to hire. But not only that, recruiters can search LinkedIn for free. Remember way back when I talked about direct sourcing and how uh, companies love free and they can find somebody for free and not have to pay Monster or Job Board to fill, a, fill a, uh, an open position all the better? Put your information out there where recruiters can find you for free. All recruiters, not just the ones paying the job boards. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, LinkedIn is free to an extent. I mean, they've made some changes recently so that recruiters can search for so long for free then they have to pay. But, you know, hey, you want to give them there are ways to search LinkedIn for free even with that restriction. I don't want to go into that. It's a totally different conversation. But just do yourself a favor, right? Be on LinkedIn in case you're not. But you, you are. You're not, you are, you are not, okay, whatever the case is, make sure you're on there, okay? Number two, uh, place recruiters are finding people is Facebook. Even though they might not tell you that they're finding you on Facebook, they're finding you on Facebook, all right? So at the very least, make sure you've mastered those privacy settings. <laughs> please, please, pretty please. Number three place they're finding you is Twitter. And number four is a candidate blog. Remember earlier when I was showing you how my blog was coming up number one when someone did a search on my name? Well, uh, that could easily have been you. You can set up a blog for free. Go to WordPress.com. There are others out there, but WordPress is the one that I use, right? So that's just another way of uh, increasing the chances of being recruited. Now, um, I also to say something else too. Since these are the top four places that recruiters have actually made hires from, uh, you want to make sure that you, if nowhere else, you have a presence on these different uh, sites. You have a strong presence on LinkedIn. You have a presence on Facebook, presence on Twitter, and your own blog because, as the data clearly shows, that's where recruiters are hiring people. Now, because uh, LinkedIn was number one, let me go back. Yeah, LinkedIn was number one by wide margin. I'm going to show you tips on how to maximize uh, your appeal to a recruiter on LinkedIn. I'm also going to talk about Facebook and a little bit about Twitter and blogs as well. So um, 
yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go, let me talk about LinkedIn first, all right? Now, this is my LinkedIn profile. Now, if you notice on my uh, LinkedIn profile, uh, I have pictures posted. Now, when you look at the pictures posted, I do that for a couple of reasons. One, I want to stand out because typically people don't want to read, you know, and recruiters are definitely notorious for that. When a recruiter gets your resume, they're going to look at the resume for probably like six seconds, nine seconds max, and nine seconds may be generous because they're looking at so many different resumes. Remember earlier when I said about if I post a job on Monster, I'm going to get 200 resumes like, like that, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to spend, you know, for better or worse, the average recruiter is not going to spend their time carefully evaluating 200 resumes. They're going to scan and they're going to look for things, look for something to stand out. And as soon as they see something that stands out, that catches their attention, then they're going to read a little bit deeper. Okay. So one thing that I, keeping that in mind, one thing I've done here with my LinkedIn profile is that I have pictures posted so that when they scan my resume, I mean, excuse, excuse me, when they scan my LinkedIn profile, they'll say, oh, here's some interesting pictures. Huh. I didn't, I didn't know that about, uh, about Jim from scanning. Let me look a little bit deeper because these pictures are catching my, are capturing my attention. So they're going to look a little bit deeper into me and thus giving a good impression. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Um, and also for that matter, let me say this too. Um, go my little rant. I've posted pictures here as, as, as I've shown, but that's not the only thing that I can post. Uh, LinkedIn also allows you to post uh, PowerPoint slides as well as PDFs. Um, so in case, uh, and also video actually, and also video. So it would be kind of cool and definitely something that a lot of people are not doing if there was a video message uh, on the LinkedIn profile so that if a recruiter goes to your profile, they'll see uh, a little video of you going, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I'm a great, wonderful person, and you really should be hiring me. But if you are camera shy and you may not even want pictures of yourself on your profile because you're just that shy, which I, I wouldn't recommend uh, being shy on LinkedIn, but we'll get into that later. But um, you can upload a PowerPoint. So maybe you make a PowerPoint presentation sharing, saying how wonderful you are and how qualified you are and how you were mentioned on podcasts and how you were featured in the news and other things like that. And that can help your profile stand out more as well. Okay. Um, LinkedIn also allows you to blog. And this is a screenshot of my blog on LinkedIn. And as you can tell, if you haven't picked up already, I tend to be a little shy. <laughs> but the good thing about having a blog on LinkedIn is that uh, you write a blog on you write a blog post and you say something really, really brilliant, something that makes you uh, that shows how smart you are or it really shows how you have a good, um, a really good in, in touch feeling about in touch feeling. What am I trying to say? That you're really keyed in into your industry. So uh, a recruiter looks at your blog on LinkedIn. And they know you have one because they, they've been to your LinkedIn profile and they see you have some blog posts there. And they're looking at your blog post and they go, "Wow, I feel really good about this person. They're saying some really smart things. They're, I don't think they're going to embarrass me to the hiring manager. So let me go ahead and approach this person and uh, try to." Uh, pitch them an opportunity or um, when they're looking you up, they'll say, okay, I've already talked to this person. I see these blog posts on LinkedIn. Uh, I see not only is he saying wonderful things, I see people are giving him a thumbs up. They're, they're, they're leaving comments saying how smart you are. I feel really good about this candidate. I'm going to go ahead and, and make sure that my hiring manager or my client really, really uh, pays attention to this person because this person is really great. So remember, as I said, that number one unwritten rule for a recruiter is not to get fired. The one way for a recruiter to get fired is to give bad candidates. And so you are not a bad candidate. You are a good candidate because you are marketing yourself really well. And uh, this is one way that you can market yourself really well. Okay. I'm rambling again. Just nod your head. Yes, I am. Should I keep, uh, uh, should I keep going? Yeah, all right, I'm, I'm going. All right. Uh, number two. Oh, number two. Number three. Whatever this is. Another thing you do on LinkedIn is to join LinkedIn groups um, because uh, not only is it a great way for you to network with your peers in the industry, it's also a way to make yourself um, available, uh, excuse me, to make yourself uh, approachable to recruiters. Uh, more often than not, uh, the people in a particular group, let's say like this finance club group, which has 651,000 members, that's the very first group here in the screenshot, uh, I, I can I can pretty much guarantee you out of those 600,000 members, there's several recruiters there. Why would recruiters be there? One, they may have an interest in finance. Sure, that could be part of it. 
But the other reason is that they're there because they are recruiting people with a financial background. So where else would they go to find people with a financial background than people inside of a group dedicated to financing, right? Makes sense. Go where the fish are. So when they, when they, the recruiters are there, they are silently watching. They're looking at what people are saying. They're looking at um, the comments they're making, the discussions and, what's, and whatnot. And they're saying, thinking to themselves, wow, that person said something really, really smart. They really sound like they know what they're talking about. Let me reach out to them uh, and, and see if I can talk to them about a potential opportunity because by virtue of what they've said and how they've conducted themselves in the group, this might be somebody who won't embarrass me. <laughs> number one rule, man, that number one rule. Uh, but not only that, but they're also someone who's very knowledgeable, so let me reach out to you. So in order to do that, you got to be active in these groups. All right, so that's a strong suggestion to you. Be active in these groups, say smart things so recruiters will notice you, right? Uh, something else that uh, you can do with LinkedIn, this is kind of cool, I just want to sort of share this. If you were to mouse over the connections link at the top where that blue arrow is pointing to, and then mouse down to the find alumni, you can uh, do a search on what people, on where people are working at who went to your college. So in this case, I went to Georgia State University. And so I'm looking at uh, data that says people who went to Georgia State University, uh, they tend to live in the Atlanta area. They tend to live in the United States and specifically the Atlanta area quite a bit. They uh, tend to work at AT AT&T, Gwinnett County Public Schools, Delta, and so on. And they tend to work in the sales industry, education industry, operations, and so on. Okay, why do I say that? What I could do with this information is that I can say, okay, people who who went to Georgia State during a certain period of time, they tend to work at AT AT&T more than any other place. So that must mean that AT&T has a soft spot for people who, uh, for Panthers, (laughs) go Panthers, people (laughs) who went to Georgia State University. That being the case, I could probably approach somebody at AT AT&T about opportunities and have somewhat of an advantage because the data here clearly shows me that they have a soft spot for Georgia State University alumni um, in, 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 in Atlanta. There you go. So just using the stats to my advantage. And again, get to it by mousing over connections, going down to find alumni, and, and there you go. Okay? Um, oh, yes, yeah, Facebook. Let's talk about Facebook for a little bit here. Okay? Uh, one thing you may notice about Facebook, and you, you no doubt have seen this, at least I have seen this quite a bit. I go to my Facebook profile, and I get these little, these little pop-ups that will come up. And they'll say, did you go to this school? Uh, did, you, did you work here? Um, is, did you uh, do something else or other? You know, and they're trying to get me to fill up my about profile a bit more. Okay. Now, I call that little pop-up a nag. Because <laughs> it's always popping up. Like, okay, okay, I filled it out. Stop nagging me. Right? The reason why I believe Facebook is doing that is because of something I term LinkedIn envy. Now, think about it. LinkedIn owns the professional space. Facebook owns the social space. If Facebook was able to get a significant portion of their population, of their members, to update all of their about section, uh, then they would be able to take some traffic away from LinkedIn and get some of the link, get some of that LinkedIn money. Excuse me, get some of that LinkedIn money, right? Facebook has a social personal space down, but they keep looking at LinkedIn and what their LinkedIn money, right? So that is why um, I'm getting these nags, and that's probably why you're getting them if you notice them from time to time as well. Now, LinkedIn saving grace, because LinkedIn has like, um, I don't know, 200 million people on it. I forget how many they have on it. Facebook has like a billion, you know? Um, The good thing that is, I think, the saving grace for LinkedIn in this case is that people really don't want recruiters looking at their Facebook page. I mean, that's just true, right? And everybody's comfortable with everyone going over to LinkedIn and checking them out over there because that's what it's for, you know? Uh, but Facebook is gradually trying to get people to, to get in the mindset of, hey, you can be professional on Facebook too, which is why they, uh, these little pop-ups come up and why you'll see other initiatives that Facebook is, is working on in the near future around that goal because they want some of that LinkedIn money too, right? Check this page out too. When you go to your About page, I don't know how long it's been since you've been to yours, but um, and I need to, uh, but this is an example of what an about page looks like. Um, when you get there, um, when you look at it at first glance, uh, I, I got to say it looks pretty much like a resume, right? I mean, I got my, my, the companies I work for, 
a uh, little highlight of, of my, my work history. It's pretty much a, a resume. Now, one thing you may not realize or not know about it because you're not in the recruiting industry, but there are a lot of tools out there that allow recruiters to search Facebook for candidates, right? Now, what these tools are doing is that they're not searching all your pictures and all that kind of stuff. They're only searching the about section on your Facebook profile. So they're searching information like this, where you worked, where you went to school, uh, your different accomplishments at these different places as you have listed them. So there are tools out there to let recruiters search this section of Facebook. Now what these recruiters will do once they found you on Facebook, they will approach you on LinkedIn because that's where everybody is comfortable. So you might be, you might, uh, you might have had a situation where you say, well, how did they find me? Or how did they um, know to look me up? Or that kind of stuff. Well, because they found you on Facebook, but because most people don't want to be approached on Facebook, they'll approach you on LinkedIn. Also, the thing about Facebook is that uh, if I were to approach somebody on Facebook that I was not connected to, um, I can send them, an, I can send them a, a message through Facebook, but it would go into their other mailbox. What you may or may not know is when you, uh, on Facebook, you have your regular mailbox uh, where you get your messages, and then you have one called Other, where all your spam goes to. And since I'm not connected to you, if I were to see a message through Facebook, it would go into your spam folder, which is the Other, uh, the mailbox called Other. So it would just go there and no one would, would see it. So, um, yeah. So, and then, but if I wanted to send you a message and have it appear in your Facebook regular, your regular Facebook box, mailbox, then I would, I would have to pay, um, I forget because I never pay for it, but it's, I would have to pay X amount of dollars, right? And so uh, one or two people that way might not be a, mutt, a lot, but if I'm trying to recruit a lot of people, it'll add up, you know, paying so much money to uh, message people. So I don't do it. A lot of other recruiters don't do it, but that is a possibility. So all that to say, <gasps> all that to say, update your Facebook page uh, master the Facebook privacy settings. As a matter of fact, I'll put a link to a video that, teach, that teaches you how to master Facebook privacy settings so that when recruiters are searching, and they are searching, <laughs> they are searching your Facebook, they are searching this about section and don't, you don't have to worry about them coming across other information that you rather they did not see. Uh, here's a link actually. Here's a link to a um, uh, Facebook privacy options. Um, and I'll link to it too, but the video that I'm going to share with you is, is more up to date and um, it's much better for you. But, you know, the story is out here. I put this slide here to remind me to say that to you. And I've said it. All right. Oh, uh, this is a Twitter profile. And I like how this person here, Ray Wunderlich, Wunderlich, Wunder, is it Wunderlich or Wunderlich? I don't know. I don't want to say it. I don't know if Ray is listening to this. Ray, if you're listening, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, is it Wonderlick? Wonderlick? I'll just stick with Ray. We'll just call him Ray. Okay, so Ray, when I see Ray's uh, Twitter profile, I see that he is an iPhone developer and tweets on topics related to iPhone, software, and gaming. That's great. That um, speaks a lot to me. It tells me exactly who he is and what he does, and he's also giving me links to his, uh, to his website. This is great because I, as a recruiter, when I'm looking for people, uh, another place that I will search like so many other recruiters, as I showed in that, other, in that earlier slide from that survey, I'm going to search Twitter for people too, and I'm going to come across this information. So if I look, happen to be looking for an iPhone developer uh, on Twitter, chances are I'm going to come across Ray's profile because he was good enough to put in his profile that he is an iPhone developer. Thank you, Ray, for making it easy for me to find someone like you when I am recruiting. So you, as a job seeker, and I'm talking to you now, looking at you, I'm shaking my finger, this is another reason why you need to set up an account on Twitter, even if you're not active on it, just so that there's some more information out there for me as a recruiter to find out about you, you know? And it's sort of, if you do this right, it sort of becomes like a really big insurance policy, you know? If you're currently working and I reach out to you, then fine, you can say, you know what, I'm not interested, but let me keep, but you can keep my information um, in your email for when you need it. So then it becomes like an insurance policy, you know? Maybe one day a recruiter reach out to you at the right time and have the right opportunity that might make you want to leave your present role. If not, you you can set up a relationship with another recruiter and when the boss gets on your nerves and you feel like you've done all you're going to do with your present company, you have somebody you can call and say, hey, you remember when you reached out to me so many uh, weeks ago or months ago or years ago? 
uh, and I wasn't open to an opportunity now, then, well, I am now, can we talk? So it's sort of like setting up an insurance policy, in a sense, you know? Just, just throwing it out there. Okay, enough of that. Uh, another thing, too, that I want to stress that you do is create a s consistent social identity. Now, on the screen is the real Superman, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> not hating on this new guy now, but just saying, uh, this is the, the cool, this is the, this is the, real, the real Superman. Um, now, when you look at this, Clark Kent is on the left-hand side. He's the mild-mannered reporter. And then Superman, of course, is on the right side. Now, people know Superman as Superman. And they know Clark Kent as Clark Kent. So when Superman is, is taking a break from flying around and, and saving the world from different menaces, giant robots, or whatever Lex Luthor's got, kicked, uh, got going on, or any other type of, of, of uh, a big emergency, he puts on his glasses and his suit, and he's the roving reporter, you know, Clark Kent, you know? So people who look up information on Clark Kent will not find information on Superman. And people looking up information on Superman will not find up information on Clark Kent. It allows, them, it allows him to have a professional side and also it allows him to have a playful side. And that's what I want to stress that you do as well. Have a Clark Kent identity online where you're, when you're posting things under your name. That's the professional side of you. And, but when you want to dance topless on the, on, the, on the Cayman Islands or do some other kind of crazy things, then you're setting up your alternate identity, uh, your Superman identity, so to speak. Right? So to that effect, I want you to make this personal oath. Okay, I want you to say, uh, I will use my real name when discussing my work history and the industry online, thus leaving a trail for recruiters to find. You're going to make it easy. Remember, everybody does the poor man background check. I guarantee you, as shown by the other data I showed you earlier, uh, recruiters will be researching you online. Give them something positive and good to find. But uh, as you see beneath the, the line in the sand that I put in there, uh, you're going to use your alias. You're Superman, or uh, I don't know, call yourself Sexy Chocolate. <laughs> if that's your thing, you know. Hey, not judging, not judging. If that's, <laughs> if that's your name, if you want to be called Sexy Chocolate, that's cool. Use the name Sexy Chocolate when you're playing online, when you're doing wild and crazy things, when you're sharing stuff, when you're commenting on, I don't know, all kinds of bizarre things that you don't want recruiters to find because a recruiter will be looking up your name. But they will not be looking up sexy chocolate, or at least they shouldn't be, <laughs> while they're at work. Anyway, you know? So keep your professional life and your social life separate as best you can online so that when recruiters are looking you up, they see only the good stuff, the professional stuff, and not the crazy so, uh, personal stuff. Make sense? Okay. Now, another thing you want to do, too, as we're about to get into the home stretch here, um, another thing you, you want to do, too, is to set up a Google Alert. Now, a Google Alert, what, it, what that does is, and actually, I don't have the address on here, but let me tell you how to get to it. You go to google.com slash alerts, A-L-E-R-T-S, google.com slash alerts. We're bringing to a page that looks something like this. Um, actually, I think they changed it recently, but essentially, it does, it does this. Now, I can put in my name, and I can say, where it says result type everything, because I wanted to search um, the, the web, the news, videos, pictures, everything is out there, right? And then where it says how often, once a day, and then how many, the best results or all results. And then I will click, I'll put in my email in there and click create alert. And what that will do is it'll, Google will search um, the web and everything that's out there. And when somebody has said something about me or about my, or have mentioned my name somewhere online, I'll get an email. So I'll be notified that uh, something new has appeared about me online. And that's good for you to do as well because what if you um, do a search on your name and, you, and you've already petitioned Google and, and Bing and Yahoo and all the bad stuff is out off the web and only good stuff or professional stuff that you want recruiters to find is out there, all right? And so you're golden. And then let's say three days later after you've done all that, something else hits the web that you're not aware of and the recruiter, the recruiter does a search and they see that thing or they'll see somebody with your name with that questionable behavior or whatever it is. And so that reflects badly on you and uh, you don't get the job, you know? Um, it happens, it happens. So one way to protect yourself is stay in the loop on who you are, uh, who you are, uh, how you're perceived online. Set up a Google alert uh, and keep track of yourself. It doesn't take but a couple seconds. This is a free tool. I highly recommend that you do it. I do it. 
uh, and I, I definitely use it. Okay? So, uh, this another, oh, oh, you know what? I almost forgot about this. This, this is a slide to remind me to, to tell you this. So, um, I'm sitting here wondering from a JavaScript perspective that, uh, oops, I'm hitting, I'm hitting the wrong button. Let me go back. Excuse me, excuse me. Okay, so I, as a job seeker, I'm sitting back and I'm thinking, okay, I'm working at a company or I plan to work at a different company. Um, and I'm going to be there for uh, a long period of time, hopefully, a couple of years, a few years, maybe longer. I want to make sure that the company is worth my time, you know? And I might hate recruiters because they're spamming me all the time and I don't want to deal with them. So, um, <laughs> not saying that I would do that or you would do that, but I know a lot of people don't really have a lot of love for recruiters, but just throwing, throwing it out there. One thing you want to keep in mind is how can I find a company that is worth my time as a job seeker? Because I know if I ask a recruiter, is this a great company? The recruiter is going to say, yes, it's a wonderful company, you know, um, because they're trying to place somebody uh, in that role, which is their job. So they might have that used car salesman smell about them, right? So you want an unbiased opinion on what it's like to work at a company. And for that, it, here are a couple of options you want to keep in mind. One is the Muse. If you go to the Muse, T H M E M U S E dot com, that's a place where uh, companies are promoting their culture. They're saying, hey, this is what it's like to work here. You'll see videos, you'll see pictures, you'll see accounts from people who work there saying, uh, this, is how we, this is how we roll at Facebook. This is what it's like to work here. And by the way, we also have jobs. You know? So it's mostly about sharing uh, what it's like to work there, and then the job is actually secondary. So that's, how, that's, that's what that site is about. about. Uh, another site you want to pay close attention to is Glassdoor. You may already know about it because Glassdoor is hugely popular with a lot of job seekers. What Glassdoor is, is sort of like a, uh, a place where people go to rant and rave about where they work. So if somebody works at Company X, they can go to Glassdoor and say, I hate working at Company X because of 1, 2, and 3. You know? And conversely, they can also go there and say, I love working at Company X because of 1, 2, 3. And they can leave that, that information anonymously so they don't have to worry about getting fired in case they're in case they're still working there. Um, so you can go there for an unbiased opinion. Um, well, mostly unbiased. You know, to be fair, some people might leave a company and they might be mad and they might say a few things that, you know, th that they're just venting and they just want to be mean and say bad things about a, about a company. So some of that is in there too, just to, just to you know, let you know. So what I would do is just take into account, uh, take it with a grain of salt that you may have a few uh, bad apples in there wanting to spoil... Um, your perception of the company, but overall, if you look at all the different reviews, you know you can get a good, you can get a good feeling uh, about what it's like to work there. Okay, just throwing it out there. Um, oh, something else too that I want you to do, um, just the same way you as a can you, it's the same way a recruiter can check you out and see your background and see if you're somebody that won't embarrass them. You can do the same thing for recruiters, right? So what I would suggest you do. Is flip the script on them a little bit, right? And I'm seeing more job seekers do this. They'll do a search on LinkedIn for recruiters uh, in their industry, and they'll read through their background. And when you do that, and I highly suggest that you do that, um, look for things like this. Now, in the top part of the screen, uh, you'll see where somebody uh, said they've placed over 120 candidates in the past six months. And they placed candidates for Boeing, Honeywell, BAE, Lockheed Martin, things like that. So when you look for stuff like this that says, okay, this, this recruiter, he's placed a lot of people. He's placed a lot of people over a period of time. They must know what they're doing. And they've also placed people for these various companies. So if I can get on this recruiter's good side and present myself really well, even if they can't place me at the company they're working at right now because they've worked at so many other companies that I want to work for because they're focused on my industry, then maybe he'll refer me to a friend or maybe he'll connect me with another recruiter if I really, really make a good impression. It's possible. It's possible. At the very least, you know that this particular recruiter is well-connected. So even if they don't stay at this present company long because they are so good at what they do, they're going to work somewhere else eventually. So you want to make sure that you're on their good side, that they know about you. So whether they place you at their present employer or whether or not they go to another company and work there, maybe they'll place you at a future company that they work for. Make sense? Right? Okay. Now, on the 
second example towards the bottom of the screen, uh, the technical recruiter for Lockheed Martin Aeronautics. They've also have said here where the blue underline is that how they placed 400 professionals in 2009, right? Which is pretty good, uh, very very good actually. But what I want to what I want to uh, point you to is where underneath that where it says four recommendations, right? And so when you look at those recommendations, what's curious about that is that those recommendations, some of them are from the people he's worked with. So his coworkers have said, oh, this is a great, great guy to work with. We love him. And he's a, he's a good guy. All right. But some of those other recommendations are from people that this person has placed. Yeah. So if I am looking for a recruiter that I want to work with, I'm going to look at how they have, how successful they've been in the past by placing so many people. Uh, what companies they work for, because that'll tell me how well connected they are and how well they know the industry. Because if someone is is um, focused on um, the uh, with aeronautical industry, and I see they worked at Lockheed Martin, they worked at, they worked at uh, Boeing, they worked at Honeywell. Okay, they're sticking to a particular industry. All right, it gives me confidence that they know the industry, which means that when they see my resume, they'll understand what I do. Okay. And uh, not only that, but I see that his coworkers like him, but also people that he's actually hired um, say good things about him. Okay, so I'm seeing all this kind of stuff. This is a recruiter I want to get next to. So uh, don't waste your time on recruiters that might not be the best help to you. Okay, focus on those recruiters who are really, really good by virtue of the things that I've, I've shown you. Um, and, uh, oh, well, okay, you're asking, well, Jim, how do I know those recruiters who are not good for me? Okay, well, let me, ah, that's so subjective. But let me, let me give you a couple of things to look for, okay? Uh, if you see a recruiter is one day a recruiting salespeople in one job, and the next recruiter, next position, he's recruiting technical, and the next recruiter, he, next job, he's doing healthcare, and then the next job, he's doing military recruiting, you know, he's all, they're all over the place and they, they weren't at those places very long. So he was like one year sales recruiter, uh, six months healthcare recruiter, and then uh, a year and a half military, and then two months, something else. And they're jumping all over the place, recruiting all different kinds of people. Then that would suggest to me that they're not focused on a particular industry. They might not get exactly what it is I do. So when I send them my resume, they're going to look for certain keywords on my resume think that I'm the right person because of the keywords on the resume because and they'll and they may reach out to me that way but that means that they don't really know what I do because they don't really know my industry because they've been all over the place jumping to different things different different types of companies you know so they're, they're if I see a recruiter uh, all over the place in terms of the type of people that they recruit then I'm gonna be like mm, I don't know if they're really worth my time also, if they're not focused on a particular industry, you know, it's one thing that, to recruit for a company two months and another company six months because they might be a contract recruiter. And a contract recruiter is somebody who will go in and work on a particular project, you know, hire so many people for a certain amount of time. The contract is over and they're going on to the next thing. So working a, a few months here and there, you know, that might not necessarily uh, give me a red flag. Uh, but if I see that they are consistently in the same industry or they're not in the same industry, but they're going back to different industries, then I might, that might be a bit of a red flag. So all that to say, I want to find recruiters who, uh, who flaunt their successes and saying, I've placed so many people. I want to find recruiters who work consistently in the industry that I'm in. I want to see ideally recruiters that have recommendations, not only from their coworkers, but from people that they have placed as well. And um, so, yeah, I think those are the type of recruiters that would be most worth my time and those are the ones I want to work for. So if I see recruiters who don't match that criteria, then I might be like, mm, I don't know if it's really worth my time. Um, I can send you my resume, sure, but my expectations are not that high. And because my time is valuable, because time is the only thing that can't be replaced, I'm going to really give a strong consideration whether or not I'm going to work with you or not, you know? Um, and that might, that might sound like, well, Jim, you're being a bit of a prima donna, aren't you? Or I'm not as qualified as you, so I can't really stake that claim. I'm in survival mode, and I really need to get a job now. I understand all of those arguments. Um, but let me, but, but let me, let me say this, let me say this. 
Um, life is short. If I'm going to work for a company for an extended period of time, I want to make sure that it's the type of company that I would feel comfortable with, that the culture matches uh, what I think a good company culture should be. I'm going to spend a significant amount of time there. I want to make sure it's a good company. I want to make sure that I'm, presenting, I'm being presented with opportunities that I can excel in. I don't want to waste my time. You know, and you don't want to waste the recruiter's time, to be fair. You know, so uh, do your research. Find recruiters that are worth your time, who know what they're doing, who've been in the industry for a while. And, you know, focus your energy on that and not waste your time. So, whoo, I said a lot. Yes, I have. I've said a lot. And um, I think I'm going to uh, get a little bit of tea, I think. I like tea. I like green tea. You know, or some M&Ms, I don't know. Something like that. And um, I'm going to just take a break. Now, at this point, I would answer your questions, but this is a video. And although I'm talking to you and I have been talking to you and I enjoy talking to you, I can't get your questions in real time, although I feel as though I'm talking directly to you and have been this whole time. <laughs> Do you feel that way, too? Like we've been, like I'm talking directly to you like I've been? Yeah, well, I feel the same way, too. So um, at this point, I can't take your questions live, but I will answer some of your questions um, and I'll tell you how I will do that in just uh, a second. This presentation has been brought to you by... And the number one job hunting book in the world. Jobs are strategies for unemployed, underemployed, and unhappily employed people. Available on Amazon.com. Get your copy today. If you have a question and want to reach me, uh, there are a number of ways you can do so. You can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, the address to my LinkedIn page is there on the screen. Also, Twitter which is uh, my favorite social network, so you probably have a good chance of catching me there. also want to point you guys out to YouTube. I have a lot of videos there, mostly about recruiting stuff, but quite a few job search strategy tips are there as well. And finally, there's my personal blog uh, that I've cited a couple times in the presentation, www.jimstroud.com. So check me out. Uh, feel free to reach out. I like to think that I'm approachable, but uh, you know, approach me and see. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, until next time, um, let's see here. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Until next time, bye-bye.